viewers! Handa na ba kayo sa isa na namang panibagong topic? Our topic for today will be about reading comprehension. But before we begin, let us first identify what is the meaning of comprehension. So comprehension is the understanding and interpretation of what is read. To be able to accurately understood the written material, make corrections between what you read and what you already know and think deeply about what you have read. Ayun, so di ba, paulit-ulit na sinasabi sa atin ng mga instructors natin na read and understand the instructions above your test papers. Ibig sabihin lang yon na we do not just merely read kung ano yung nasa text but we also need to comprehend, we also need to understand for us to be able to answer the test questions properly, right? Hindi lang siya kabasa-basa lang. Yung iba nga noon sinasabi na okay for your first reading, just merely read but for the second reading, you need to understand what you are already reading you have to take down notes on the important factors on the important messages and then later on we will um slowly iisa-isahin natin kung anong ibig sabihin ng mga points na yon so that is comprehension what you understand so for reading comprehension there are general strategies on how to do it all right so Listen carefully, reviewers. Get your notes, get a pen and paper, and take down notes. For this will be very important for your exams. The first general strategy is previewing. So what do you mean by previewing? Previewing includes activities that involve thinking about what might occur in a story based on the illustrations. Example, including taking a picture or a walk through a book cover, title, and many others. It always precede reading and involve predictions about the general content of a text and often leads into activating prior knowledge related to the story. Di ba kung nagbabasa tayo, I mean, kung bibili tayo ng mga book sa likod ay mayroong synopsis. Di ba? Ibig sabihin nun, sinamarize yung story so that we have a prior knowledge. We are having a preview on what we are going to Read. Binibigyan tayo ng prior knowledge on what to expect. Next one, schema building. Includes activities that involve clarifying a concept and building background knowledge. For example, the teacher tells the students about the Middle Ages while reading a fairy tale. Ayun, parang so that what we are reading will be more interesting, will be more entertaining is we are comparing Ikinokumpara natin siya sa ibang mga textbooks. Like for example, that one is a fairy tale. We all know that Middle Ages, meaning history, is somewhat boring subject. But for us to be able to be more interested, be more entertained while learning about that particular book, about that particular topic, we compare it to something entertaining. Like for example, fairy tale. So that is a schema building. We set the mood of our readings. Third one, highlighting or identifying includes activities that involve picking out the important details com- conveyed through a text. Examples include verbally listing, underlining, highlighting, or otherwise noting major points. Highlighting differs from summarizing because it explicitly involves identifying the important details within a text. Ito, Nung high school ako, nung college ako, ito yung pinakamahirap na gawin ko. Kasi kahit nag-highlight ka ng mga important points, parang feeling mo important points lahat. Di ba may meme nga sa Facebook na halos pati spaces ng book or ng page ng book, yung nasa uh, margin, ini-include na lang sa pag-highlight kasi feeling mo important points lahat, main points lahat. But we really need to be skeptical We need to be very keen in identifying those main points and highlighting those important points for us to be able to understand, to comprehend more what we are reading. Ayun. Siguro, yung hina-highlight natin is akala natin main point siya, pero sub-point pala siya, sub-main point. So, it's better if we highlight, we have different highlighters para ma-identify natin asan talaga yung main point, asan talaga yung sub-main point. Next one is we have 
summarizing. So, summarizing includes activities that involve generating an overall statement or identifying the main ideas of the content of the text. This activity condenses the text to the main points. This might include generating a sentence that tells the story or drawing a picture in response to the text you just read. So, ayon. Parang from your highlighting, from your highlight um, main points, you do the summarizing, di ba? For example, um, if an instructor is, I mean, an instructor is making a um, making a module for your students, hindi naman yung lahat na dun sa references niya ay ilalatag niya lahat-lahat dun sa module, no. What they are really doing is that they get the main point, they highlight the main points, they... Um, compile it in a word word document parang ganun and then you and then they summarize it for for the students to be able to get the main points lang yung mga unnecessary points wala na yan and then after highlighting that they already summarize into one big um big main points yung parang kung ano lang yung necessary yun lang yung dapat malaman or include kasi kapag mal mahaba or marami na ang kailangang basahin ng isang tao, we became less interested, less entertained on doing so. So, summarizing is very important. Next is we have retelling. Retelling is, um, in retelling activity, students are asked to retell a story using their own words. This differs from summarizing because a retell ideally mimics the text structure and includes as many details of a text as possible ayon so meaning retelling it's on your own na nga how it's your it's in your own um on your own opinions on your own words for example during kindergarten i mean elementary kindergarten di ba there are a lot of fairy tales that teachers ginagawa nilang competition or ginagawa nilang activity sa classroom is to for you to retell a story Diba kasi parang if you are reading a story and then you retell it to the class or you you retell it to a friend, syempre naman magiging observant ka sa binabasa mo kasi so that you can accurately tell the others what is the meaning or what is the story, what is the book all about. Hindi naman yun na you are retelling the story pero pasagwe-sagwe ka. You are not retelling because if you do if your audience if who you are talking with does not understand what you retell them, that only means you do not understand to what you have read. Okay, another tip, context cues. So, context cues include activities in which students are using pictures, the title, or previous parts of the text to understand a new event or a new information presented in the text. For example, a teacher might advise a child to look at a picture to identify the setting of a story. It should be noted that this strategy is generally considered a weak substitute for fluent phonological decoding. Ayun nga, di ba? As, as we are going to recall nung mga younger days natin, halos lahat ng binabasa natin is may mga pictures, di ba? Kasi kung puro na lang sa text, kada, um, kada page is text na lang, lagi text, text, walang pictures, is hindi tayo interesado. But, when we grow old, pictures is unnecessary. Kasi yung imagination natin is malawak na. So, we are able to understand what we are reading. Di ba? It says there, it is considered as a weak substitute for fluent phonological decoding. Kasi, we are not able to really comprehend kung sa pictures na lang. Kasi parang in spoon feed na tayo what is the story or what is the book all about. Hindi na tayo nagkakaroon ng sarili nating imaginations on what really are we reading. Ayon. So that means context use. Context use is having a substitute for text, meaning pictures. Next one, graphic or semantic organizers. So, graphic or semantic organizers include activities which students are using graphic or semantic organizers, example, Venn diagrams or story webs, in order to aid their comprehension. Graphic or semantic organizers are frequently used to help students organize their writing efforts. Well, this is correct, di ba? Kasi Venn diagrams parang 
or concept maps, it always tells where is the story going or what are the topic, is it connected or not. Parang it gives us a clear idea, a clear picture of what we are reading. Parang nasusunod-sunod natin. Kasi kung maraming text, maraming text, we usually do not identify already if they are connected. But with this, with graphic or semantic organizers, we know kung saan patungo yung ideas ng isang book na binabasa natin, di ba? Para siyang objectives, but in a form of a semantic or graphic organizers. Yun. Hindi lang siya puro text. Next one, comparing or contrasting. This includes activities that involve making comparisons across or within texts. For example, asking how are lions and tigers the same and how they are different. So parang afterwards na ito sa binasa natin may mga questions na inilalagay, di ba? Comparing and contrasting parang I mean para silang ikino-compare. You have read. Sige nga, parang tanungin nga natin kung ano ba yung pag yung nalaman mo talaga, may pagkakapareho ba sila or may pagkakaiba ba? Ganun. So that's how you comprehend with the text. You have or me or I mean You have to do or you may do comparing and contrasting. Next one, question, response, and generation. Questioning includes activities that involve generating or answering questions regarding factual or contextual knowledge from the text. Example, what did Ira miss when he went to the sleepover? Then, we also have other comprehension activities Incorporate questioning includes or including activating prior knowledge. Example, when the teacher uses a question to scaffold children in activating personal knowledge related to the text. When you go to an amusement park, what do you expect to see? Parang this type of question is ibinibigay before the story or before the topic was read. Parang All right. So before we go through the story, before we go through the text, kindly take down notes of the of these following questions because throughout our topic, throughout our discussion, you need to identify the answer for these questions because afterwards we are going to answer this. Parang ganon. And then another one is comprehension monitoring. Example: When the teacher uses a question aimed at stimulating students' metacognitive assessment of whether they comprehend the text. Did I understand what happened there? Parang afterwards na to, it's not in the story anymore, it's not in the book. Parang it's, your teacher will be asking you for your own opinion about that particular situation. Kung tama ba or hindi. Or if you are the protagonist of the particular story, would you do, would you still do the same? Or if not, what will you do? Parang kanon. And then, we also have the predicting. Example, when the teacher asks students to predict what will happen next. What do you think the lost boy will do now? Diba? Parang in between the topics, the discussion, or the story, your teacher will ask you. Okay, so before we proceed to the next situation, to the climax, What do you think will happen? Sige nga, if you really understand what we are ha- what we are reading, what we are discussing, sige nga, ano yung sa tingin nyo mangyayari ganito, ganyan? And then the students will have, of course, different reactions if they really understand, they really comprehend what the teacher is telling them. Alright. So another topic is we have Activating prior knowledge. This includes activities that involve activating students' personal knowledge as it relates to the content of text in order to facilitate comprehension. An example would be asking, Have you ever slept over a friend's house when reading Ira Sleeps Over? This relates to, to the student's personal knowledge. ba diba? Parang binibigyan mo na kayo ng preview ng teacher ninyo. Sige nga. Do you already, parang ganito nga, do, did you already have a sleepover over a friend's house? Tapos, sige, mag answer yung ibang students, yes ma'am or no ma'am, kasi ganito ganyan, strict ang parents. But then, alright, so what we are going to, what you are going to listen for today is a story about how Ira do her sleepover over a friend's house. Sige nga, tingnan nga natin 
let us justify. Yung mga strict parents ninyo, let us justify. Let us, let us try to justify why they are not allowing you like to do like that, like that. Or if you have already done, sige nga. All throughout the story, may I know if you have already experienced the same or what have you experienced. Ganyan. They are kinukuha na ng teacher ninyo yung prior knowledge ninyo. They are inputting that this story will be entertaining for you because you are already ex- you already experienced this or you are longing to experience this. Ayan. Next one is comprehension monitoring. It includes activities that involve stimulating students' metacognitive awareness regarding their comprehension of text or sharing strategies to provoke students to think about whether they are fully understanding. And then generally, these activities involve thinking about one's own understanding of a particular text and whether the text is making sense. Example, the teacher pauses and says, did that make sense to you? If not, how can we fix this? Or wait, did I understand that? Or that didn't make sense to me? Let's go back and reread. Parang ganun. All throughout the story, there are other um, context, we, hindi natin maipagkakailan na there are texts all throughout ma, parang na-confuse na yung, what? I did not understand, parang mabilis or parang mabilis ang pangyayari, kailangan nating balikan ulit para mas maintindihan natin, ganun. Yan yung comprehension monitoring. All throughout, you check your audience, you check your students, you check who you are talking with if they are nasusunod ba, na, nasusundan ba nila yung mga sinasabi mo. So, this may include identifying areas of difficulty while reading, using think aloud procedures to pinpoint difficulties, looking back in the text, restating or rephrasing text, or looking forward to solve a problem. Ayun, parang in between you do emphasis and then when you are talking with someone, parang may isip mo, gets pa ba niya? Kasi you are looking at their facial expressions too. Or while you are reading, ikaw, ikaw ba na, na nasusundan mo ba yung topic mo or masyadong ikaw mismo hindi mo na ma-understand. So, yun. It's okay. It's valid to do a reread about a particular phrase or particular chapter, particular paragraph, or even the particular book over all of it. Ayun. It's, it's okay. It's valid. The next is... We have the last one. The last general strategy is predicting and inferencing. This includes activities that involve predicting future events or information not yet presented based on information already conveyed by the text. Example, making predictions from foreshadowing. Predicting occurs while reading a story and involves specific details or events. Ayun na nga, di ba? Kasi may mga stories, may mga books na cliffhanger. When we say cliffhanger, ikaw mismo ang magbibigay ng end ng story or parang kung para sa iyo ano kaya ang mangyayari next or kung para sa iyo kung hindi mo ginawa to ano kaya yung mangyayari kanyan it's a type of strategy of a particular book a particular story to test if you really have your reading comprehension if you comprehend the story and usually teachers instructors do that di ba nagpapa recitation yung teacher kung na, naintindihan ba talaga ng student yung binasa nila kasi there's no use in reading if you do not understand what you are reading dapat talaga when you read you also understand what you are reading ayun because it could be of of future use with your prior knowledge so ayan those are the general strategies in reading comprehension. I hope you have learned something in our topic for today, reviewers, kasi this would be a big help for you when you have your exam, when you take your exam, because you should not just read, but you should comprehend very well the questions being asked so that you will answer, rightly answer what is the question being asked. Ayon. So, stay tuned, reviewers, because that's not the end of our reading comprehension, I mean, discussion. That's the only 
part one. So stay tuned for our part two. All right. Thank you so much for listening and watching. Reviewers, see you on our next video.